Hello everyone and welcome to day one of God's Big Story. My name is Andrew and I have some amazing news to tell you all. I'd been really sad the past couple of weeks because I'd heard Holiday Bible Club was supposed to be cancelled. Because of um, the sickness that's going around, because we're locked in our houses, we can't see our friends or go to school or go out and about, I thought that Holiday Bible Club was cancelled. But that's where my amazing news comes in because we're bringing Holiday Bible Club straight to you. This week we're going to have five videos where we're going to teach you some stories from the Bible, we're going to learn some memory verses, sing some songs, do some actions, and it's just going to be a great week. I'm super, super excited and I hope you guys are too. And I'm even going to have some special guests along who are going to help teach us these things. But before we start, we're going to pray. Each and every day, we're going to start by praying to God. And it's so, so important and so, so amazing that we get to pray because we get to pray to God who, in our story today, we're going to learn, created the entire world, created everything in it, including created me, including he created you. And so it's so, so amazing that we get to talk to him. And to do that, we're going to fold our arms, bow our heads and close our eyes. There's nothing special or magical about doing that, but it just helps keep us away from distractions and help focus on talking to God. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you so, so much um, that we can come and learn stories from your Bible and um, learn stories all about how you created the entire world and about how you sent your son into this world um, to die for sins that we can come to know you. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to listen really, really well um, to the story that Joel's about to bring us. You'd help us to listen really, really well and to learn something new about you. We pray this all in your great name. Amen. Okay, it is time for our first story and it's time to introduce my first special guest. Joel, it's over to you. Thank you, Andrew. I am so happy to be here and so excited to share with everyone our incredible lesson on creation. Now, I don't know what comes into your head when you hear the word creation, but for me, I love to be creative through things like coming up with ideas or uh, playing musical instruments or writing things down. All of these things are really fun ways to be creative. But today I've brought my most enjoyable way of being creative with me and that is through the art of play-doh. So I don't know if you can see that but it is play-doh and what we're gonna do is play a game called Who Am I? And that's just to get our brains warmed up before our story. So if you haven't played Who Am I before, how it's going to work is that I'm going to give you a number of clues and using these clues you need to work out what animal I'm pretending to be. So your first clue, for example, would be that I have a head with two eyes and a mouth. And as we do that, I'm going to make the animal out of Play-Doh. So there you go, there's the, the head with the eyes and the mouth. And obviously you're not going to get off that, but there's going to be more clues and they will get easier as we go along. So the next clue is that I have a body with four legs. Now again, still quite difficult to work out what, what animal I am because a lot of animals have four legs on a body. Hold on, let's see. While I do that, I'm going to give you the next clue and that is that I live in the jungle. So I wonder if you can think of any animals that walk around on four legs in the jungle. Okay. Next clue after that is that I have a tail. Okay, so that's the next thing about this animal. He has a tail. And your next clue is your second last clue. I'm sure some of you might have it now. And um, this one might give it away is that I have a mane on my face. Okay, so there's a big mane on his face. And your last clue is that I say roar. Okay, so that's what we've ended up with. I've tried to make a lion. Uh, it's not very good, but sure. Who cares? Now, imagine you took the Play-Doh away from me, okay? And you asked me to make another lion, but this time I wasn't allowed to use anything. No Play-Doh or no other things. I just had to come up with a lion and make it. Do you think I'd be able to do that? No, there's absolutely no way that I'd be able to do that because that is impossible. You can't just create something out of nothing. However, in our lesson today, we learned that that is exactly what God did when he was creating the world. He started with nothing and created everything. And that's really hard for us to even imagine. In fact, I'm going to read now from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the very first verse of the Bible. And it says this, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So I don't know if you picked up on this, but if you listen to the first four words very carefully, it said, In the beginning, God so in the beginning, there was just God. He outlives the whole universe. He is older than the whole world. 
And in fact, God has always existed. And we also know from the Bible that God will also always exist. He has no beginning and no end. He is completely eternal and everlasting. Now, that just shows us how powerful and big God is, that he can always exist, he always will exist, and that he created this whole universe. And today we're going to think about how he did that and what order he did did that in. And I actually have some actions that I'll be able to share with you today, and hopefully you'll be able to share them with your friends and, and, and your family. Now, day one, God said, let there be light. Okay, so day one, God said, let there be light. He spoke and things came into being. That's our first actions. Day one, let there be light. On the second day, God created the sky, which separated the sea and the water. So day two, he created the sky. On the third day, he created dry land. So we're going to do an action recap now. So on the first day, he created the he created light. On day two, he created the sky. On day three, he created the land. Okay, so we're just doing that flat for land. And on each of these days, God said it was good. He was happy with the work he did and said it was good. On the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon and the stars. Okay, so that's our action for that. Sun, moon, stars. On the fifth day, God created the fish and the birds. And again, God said it was good for all of these days. Now, on the sixth day, God created land animals. So that's things like uh, maybe the creepy crawlies and the and the bears and all, all those animals that you can think of. God created them. But also on that day, he created something else. And I wonder if you can think about what that was. It is. I'll give you I'll give you another clue. It has two legs, two arms. It has hair on the top of its head, maybe. Uh, it has two eyes and a mouth and it can speak in different languages and I'm out of clues but if you haven't got it already it is us it is humans he made man and woman and there's something special about this day because for all the other days God said that it was good but on this day in fact we learned that God said it was very good so he was so pleased with his creation on this day so pleased with man and woman and in fact we learned that God actually made man and woman in his image and we're going to look more at that in a second but just to finish off our actions, we had day one, let there be light. Day two, he made the uh, sky. Day three, he made the land. Day four, he made the sun, moon and stars. Day five, the fish and the birds. And day six, we're going to say he made us. He made land animals. He made us. OK, now we're going to read from Genesis 1, chapter 27 or 26, sorry, uh, to 28, and it says this. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea of, uh, and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created man in his own image and it, uh, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves uh, on the earth. So we're uh, told that God made us in his image and that he was he thought we were very good. However, only two chapters later, something terrible happens. And that is that, well, I wonder, I wonder if you know what it is. It is that. And man and woman, it's Adam and Eve, committed the first ever sin. Now, if you don't know what the word sin means, it means anything we do to disobey God or to hurt God. An easy way to remember what sin is, is through this acronym that says shove off God. So that's the S, shove off God. I'm in charge, which is our I. And then N is not you. So shove off God. I'm in charge, not you. That's sort of what sin is like when we think that we know better than God and we disobey him. So in, in our, our lesson today, Adam and Eve were living peacefully in the Garden of Eden until the uh, serpent came over to them and told them to eat off the one tree that God had commanded them not to, the, off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Eve took the apple and gave it to Adam and he ate off the tree. Now, that is awful because that, has, that means that 
so many bad things. That means that sin has entered the world and all of the bad things that happen today are caused by that. But in the same chapter, we receive a promise from God and it is the most amazing promise ever. God says that although you have sinned and the world has been stained by it. Okay, so the world has been stained by sin. There's still, there's always consequences for the bad things that we do. And it's not always just disobeying God. It can be lots of other things. And the Bible is filled with things that we should and shouldn't do. And when we break those rules, break those laws, that is sin. So it says this, and um, that although the world has been stained by our sin, he, I, I will send someone and he will come to repair the damage that has been done by sin and offer a way of having sins forgiven. And one day creation will be replaced by a new creation, which is perfect like before. I wonder if you know who God is speaking about when he says that. Who was God going to send to save us from our sin? If you said Jesus, you are right. God sent his son Jesus to live a perfect life on earth so that he could be a perfect sacrifice. He died on the cross and took the punishment of the sin of those who put their faith in him and asked for forgiveness. And not only this, but God raised him from the dead three days later so that uh, one day his followers will also be raised to life with him for eternal life with him in heaven. So all of us have sinned and all of us are worthy and, and deserve the punishment that we, we should receive for that because sin is this terrible thing that tells God to go away. However, because God loves us, he sent his son Jesus to die for us and live this perfect life and to be the perfect sacrifice. So if we give our lives to Jesus, if we put our faith and hope in him, and as for forgiveness, our sins will be forgiven and we will spend an eternity with God. What an incredible promise and what an incredible truth. Um, I'm sure we're going to learn more about that as the week goes on. But thank you so much for listening. And I can't wait to see the rest of our holiday Bible club or our bi team, whatever it is. Thank you so, so much. Bye. Joel, thank you so, so much for teaching us that story today. And boys and girls, I hope you listened really, really well and were able to learn something new from the story that Joel told us. I actually have a second special guest today. And I'm going to hand over to Emily now, who's going to teach us our first memory verse. Hello, boys and girls. I wonder if you like to go on adventures. Over this period of lockdown, we haven't really been able to get out and about much and I'm sure you just can't wait until you can go on lots of little adventures. Well, there's a boy who lives in my house and he loves to go on adventures too. And that's my brother. His name is Joel. Joel's going to come and introduce himself. But Joel loves to go on adventures up in the morning mountains and maybe some of you have been there before it's a really lovely part of northern ireland and i recommend it but when joel's going up the morns he sometimes stays for a couple of days and there's lots of things that he needs to keep him safe and to make sure that, that he gets home again all right so one of the things that joel brings with him is this really really big coat and it's really thick and it's waterproof because in Northern Ireland it rains an awful lot and that makes sure that he doesn't get too wet and his trousers are waterproof too. And he also wears a really tough pair of boots because the terrain, the ground when you're going up through the morns can be really, really gravelly, really unstable and really hard to walk on. So he needs a very good pair of boots. And Joel also brings a massive big rucksack with him. I don't know if I'd be strong enough to carry it, but inside that rucksack he has different things to sleep with, different things to cook with, um, and it's really, really important. But two of the most important things that Joel brings with him are his map and his compass. All right, because without his map and his compass, Joel doesn't know the way he is going. In the morns, there aren't any signs, sure there aren't, Joel? No. So it's not like you're driving along the road and you can just look at the sign and know where to go. No, there's none of those. Without the compass and without the map, Joel would be completely lost. Well, thanks very much, Joel. Really appreciate you. your help. Okay. Bye-bye. But you know, boys and girls, the Bible tells us 
that we are lost. The Bible tells us that we don't know the way that we're going and, and we don't know how to get to the destination that we need to get to. The Bible tells us that you and I and the whole world are lost and the verse we're going to learn today is going to explain that. Okay, so the verse, which is found in God's word, the Bible, which is completely true, so we can trust it. It's found in the New Testament in John chapter 14, verse 6. And if you have a Bible at home, why don't you look up your Bible and see that, that it's written there too? But in John chapter 14, verse 6, it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, so I came up with some actions to help us get this verse into our heads. And as I'm doing them, why don't you follow along at home and see if you can maybe even do it at the end without looking at the words. Okay, so after three, two, three. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, we'll try that one more time just so you can make sure that you've got it. All right, so after three, two, three. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, so Jesus says some really interesting things about himself in this verse. I wonder if you know what the first thing that Jesus says about himself is. Well, if you thought or if you even maybe said out loud, the way you would be absolutely right and I think you deserve a sweet if you were here with me I would definitely give you one but Jesus says that he is the way the way to work how is he the way I'm sure you have all those all those thoughts I wouldn't go around saying I'm the way that sounds strange but what Jesus is talking about is that he is the way to heaven boys and girls he is the only way to heaven you see, heaven is an absolutely perfect place. Heaven is where God lives. God is the one who is in control of everything. God is the one who created this whole earth. He's the one who created you. And the Bible tells us that God is absolutely perfect. He hates something that is in your life and in my life. He hates our sin. And boys and girls, sin is anything that you think or say or do that breaks God's law. God really hates that sin. God hates it so much that he has to punish it. And that punishment is being separated from God forever in hell when we die or when Jesus returns. That's a really sad thought. Boys and girls, the Bible tells us that with our sin, we're like Joel if he was in the mornings that he didn't have a compass. We're completely lost and we have no way of finding our way to heaven, of being rescued. We just can't do it alone. Well, I want you to hold that thought and we're going to try and practice our verse again, okay? And maybe you might be able to close one eye when you're doing it this time. So you're going to have to really concentrate because you're going to have to close your eye and you're going to have to be doing the actions as well. Okay, so after three, two, three. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, I wonder how you get on. Well, I hope you're starting to get it into your heads. The second thing that Jesus says about himself is that he is the truth. Okay, and that also sounds a bit strange. It would be strange if I came up to you and said, I'm the truth. 
What are you talking about? But Jesus is explaining that he is the only true way to heaven. He is the only true way to be with God. And you know, everything that Jesus says is true. And because of that, we can trust him. Jesus is God's son. And so he is absolutely perfect. And because he loves you and me and the whole world, Jesus came from heaven down to earth and he lived as a man. And he never would have done anything wrong. So that old lie you tell or you fall out with your brother or sister and maybe you hit them because you get really frustrated or that really mean thought that you get about someone who you just don't really like. Jesus never got on in that way because he was completely without sin. And boys and girls, even though he was perfect, because he loves you so, so much, he went to the cross and he died for you. He took the punishment for sin that you and that I deserve. He did that so that you could be forgiven. He did that and became the way for you to know God, just like that compass shows you the way, which means that you can get home, you can get home safely. Jesus is the way, he's the way for you to be rescued and to find your way to heaven. Okay, so we're gonna think a bit more about that in a second. But firstly, we're going to practice our verse again, okay? So I wonder this time, when you're doing the actions, could you try and spin around? Maybe that's a wee bit tricky when you're doing all these movements with your hands, but why don't you try it? Okay, so after three, two, three. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, there's one other thing that Jesus says about himself in John 14, 6. And hopefully by now you know exactly what that thing is. Jesus said that he is the light. Okay, so we were just thinking about how Jesus died for us. Boys and girls, he didn't stay dead. That's why when we say the life in the verse, we put our hands up like this. Because boys and girls, on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus did not stay dead. He became alive again. And that is just absolutely incredible. He had the power to do that. And that means that he is the only one with the power to save you. He wants you to be forgiven. He wants to save you. He wants to make a way for you to spend forever with God in heaven when you die. And that is so incredible. Boys and girls, I wonder if you have come to Jesus and put your trust in him. And maybe you think, I don't really know what that means. Does that mean that I go to church? Does that mean that I pray? Well, those are good things, but they're not the way to heaven. Jesus says at the end of the verse, no one comes to the Father except through me. So that means you can't get your way to God by doing these good things by yourself. You need Jesus and you must put your trust in him. To do that, all you must do is pray to God, speak to God. He's listening to you and he wants to hear you. Tell him that you're really, really sorry for breaking his laws and sinning against him. Believe that Jesus is able to save you because he died for you and he is alive and choose to give your life to God. You know, if you have any questions about that, feel free to get in touch with us or to get in touch with, with your local church. And I'd really like to think that they would help you to understand that. But if you're thinking that that is something that you would like to do, don't ignore that wavering thought. See to it. Give your life to Jesus. It's the most important thing you could ever do. Okay, boys and girls, so we're going to practice our verse one more time. 
And don't worry, because we're going to hear the verse tomorrow again. And hopefully, by the end of tomorrow, you'll be able to say no problem whatsoever. But over the course of today, why don't you keep practicing with your actions and maybe even try and get some of your other family members to do it along with you. Okay, so after three, two, three. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Except through me. Emily, thank you so much for teaching us our memory verse for today. And boys and girls, I hope you really enjoyed. I hope you were able to follow along at home. And if you think by the end of just day one that you could say the memory verse by yourself, why not get someone at home to test you? You say the memory verse and do the actions for them and they can check to see if you're right. But don't worry if you don't know it by now. We're, if you come back tomorrow, we're going to go back over our memory verse again just to learn it again to make sure we all know it really, really well. But unfortunately, that's near the end of day one of God's big story. But before we close, each and every day, we're going to have a new song for you to learn and some actions on screen that you can follow along to. So please do jump up on your feet, follow along, sing the song and do the actions. They're so, so fun. Um, and I hope you do come back again tomorrow. Join us again for day two. We're going to be learning some more stories, going again over a memory verse and we'll have a new song and some new actions for you to learn. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.